Oke, okay. ini adalah Oh, welcome everyone. Welcome on Instagram. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So we're gonna wait a few minutes here uh, as everyone's coming in. Maybe we'll start in around around seven minutes. Let's start us around seven thirty-eight. So, we might just start at 7.35, I mean, everyone should be getting the notifications now on YouTube, uh, through the email, um, I've tested it out, and once I'm live on YouTube, uh, the emails go out like, maybe a minute after I'm live, so that's pretty quick, so I'm sure uh, if you guys are subscribed to my YouTube and keep on Instagram, if you, if you guys aren't, aren't subscribed, to my YouTube channel, you guys should. I'm almost at 100 subscribers, so if you guys can help me on that, <laughs> that'd be great. Uh, I, think, I think I'm at uh, 93 subscribers, so uh, that'd be a huge milestone for me uh, to be at 100. But thank you all for all the continuous support that I, that you guys have been giving me. Um, I really, really appreciate it. Um, you know, it's been uh, it's been a, it's been a hard but a very uh, great journey to see everyone. Uh, and, and uh, I really, really love how I'm able to help uh, many people just through online, you know. Um, and social media has really changed the, the game here of, of how you can help people out. So I hope you guys all have been uh, getting some type of value out of these lives, hopefully. Been comfortably cozy on TOS finally. We will feel the other to me now. <laughs> well, I mean, we we will still pre it's still pretty good and we will simple. Um, but TOS is pretty good too. Um, but TOS fills can all, can be a little bit uh, wanky here and there. Um, it's I mean I've had some trouble 
uh, last week with, with fills. Um, it didn't fill me where I wanted it to be filled, especially when I even had a limit order on TOS. Um, so just watch out for that. Um, and market orders are, are, are is, is exceptionally worse than limit orders as well on TOS for some reason. I don't know if that's only me, um, but I will never do a market order again. <laughs> um, I, I make sure I do my limit orders as always on TOS. Hey, chicas underscore 47. What's up? What's up? What's up? You're welcome, man. You're welcome. I mean, thank you for even, uh, uh, you know, coming up and uh, appearing for these live streams. So, you know, I really, really appreciate you guys for doing that. All right. So, uh, since it's past 735, Let's go ahead and start. Yeah, no hate on we uh, will just find something more suitable for my edge. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that feels a little bit wonky, yeah. <laughs> okay, so, Chad, you have Roku, PayPal, Piton, and Amazon. Perfect, those are actual names that I'm looking at as well. So, uh, Piton, I actually did a day trade today, uh, which is perfect as well. Uh, so I'll, I'll make sure to go over that. Uh, but chat before I, I start, I am actually wanting to go over Uber. All right, so this is a name that uh, popped up while I was doing my um, technical analysis um, after the market closed. And Weeble looks very, uh, not Weeble, <laughs> Uber <laughs> looks very interesting. And um, what we have here is we're looking at a potential double bottom uh, on these candlesticks. And here we go. There we go. Okay, so um, with Uber here, I think there's a lot of potential for us to see a continuation to the upside, even if uh, we had a pretty bearish candlestick here, to be honest today. Um, but yesterday's volume uh, was phenomenal. I mean, we, we've had double the amount of volume than the average volume. And uh, you know, this kind of tells me that buyers are here, except today, you know, the, the market's a little bit, uh, they, it seems like we wanted to go down and go lower, uh, which it did, um, and, and many names uh, were, were going lower as well, especially um, after the disappointing retail earnings as well. Uh, so names like, you know, retail names I'm I've been looking at, GPS, uh, UAA, um, let's see, J JWN, um, and etc. So, you know, uh, you know, the markets did head lower today, um, but Uber I think has potential to keep on going higher uh, to, to uh, maybe maybe the end of the year. Okay, um, but you know I, I'm looking for a potential dollar bottom bounce here, which we had, which, which we were uh, kind of following through yesterday, but today we kind of broke that pattern. So uh, it seems like we want to uh, head up higher if we're able to come back above the daily 50 SMA here on Uber. So. Let's see how this uh, uh, this works out. Um, yeah, so if, if you guys uh, have no names to watch for tomorrow, I would say Uber is a good contender uh, for a potential bounce tomorrow. And uh, in order for us to come back to uh, the uptrend is uh, we need to close above $46 here and uh, we need to stay above the daily 50 SMA as well. All right. Okay, so hey, welcome Zeeks. Welcome venturing with James. Welcome, welcome. Okay, so let's look at the first ticker here, Roku. So, I got destroyed with Roku today. Um, I was, uh, but fortunately, I was able to get out my contracts um, right at market open, like a minute after the market opened. Um, and I was able to go through and, and get filled on slight slippage. Um, so, you know, I think, I think Roku here, um, it, it, I wouldn't touch it anymore for now since we're, we're actually near the next level of support around 240 ish, 240 to 241. Uh, we should be seeing a little bit of a bounce there. Um, tomorrow we'll, we'll definitely see an oversold bounce, chat. So make sure you're watching out for that as well. Uh, but to be honest, I'm not going to be touching this name. Um, there is, isn't a lot of support, even if, if you may bounce around 240 to 241. Um, I, I'm most likely going to see a lot more support um, around 230. Right? So um, that's another 15 points lower than the current price. So, um, and, and the selling volume today we had, uh, this downgrade that we had on Roku is completely uh, unfortunate, obviously, since I was looking for a nice reversal. And we ended up 
uh, a, a, a nice candlestick yesterday, a nice hammer candlestick with good volume. Um, but you know, you, you can't you can't control these catalysts, so there's nothing we can do. Um, just have to minimize the losses here. Um, but Roku, um, you know, the, these are levels that you guys have to be watching out for. Uh, you know, I wouldn't say there's, there's there's no resistance so far to be watching out for, uh, other than the intraday resistances that we might be uh, uh, looking at. But uh, so far, we have two levels of support here: uh, 240 and then 230 right here. So just continue to watch out for these support levels. And then PayPal. So. PayPal, I looked at the uh, analyst downgrade um, and they're just very, very bearish just because of the fact that they think PayPal, you know, even with their constant innovation and their, you know, their ability to continuously be adaptable to any market conditions or economic conditions, um, they still think that PayPal is going to be uh, squeezed out by competitors uh, who are also doing the same thing and maybe doing things better. So, um, you know, with PayPal, I think, I, I still think they're kind of underestimating PayPal. Uh, and at the same time, I also think it's, it's, a, it's a bit cheap. And with the fundamental analysis I've done on the CF for Swinger Watch as well, uh, for my subscribers, I think um, PayPal should be still a good dip buy here. Um, I, I'm not going to mind too much of, of the downgrade, um, but it, obviously it's not too flattering, you know, uh, with this downgrade for PayPal. But... I would say it's it's still a pretty good uh, choice for for a dip buy uh, for PayPal. Still a great growth stock in my opinion. Um, so we're right back into the base that we made uh, last week. So we the base that I that I'm talking about here is we have a huge area of, at least uh, at the very least a huge solid area of support around 200 and then a, a solid area of resistance around 208 to 207. Okay. Uh, but if you guys want a you know whole number a whole number, I would say 210 will be our area to kind of come back to an uptrend. Um, but we have critical areas of, of resistance that we need to be able to uh, uh, break out of first. So 207, 208 will be your uh, area that you guys need to be looking out for. Um, so we bounce at a critical area of support as well today around 204. So 204 we we bounce pretty well here. Um, so I think we should be able to at least re, uh, retest 208 again and slightly reject it. So, uh, you know, that's something that I'm going to be watching out for tomorrow since I did add on this dip today onto my position. Um, but at the same time, I also think that uh, sometimes whenever analysts are downgrading, right, uh, these analysts are actually, they actually have a, a position already. Um, but, you know, these analysts, they kind of want to affect the price and they actually downgrade the stock to, to grab it cheaper, right? And, and they're, they're allowed to do this too as well. Uh, uh, so keep that in mind. So, you know, they uh, just because of the fact that they weren't able to get in, uh, since, the, since PayPal was moving up higher and higher and higher pretty rapidly here um, after bottoming out here, um, they decided to uh, downgrade it. And uh, I'm pretty sure they've added some positions here at, at the dip here. So, oops, I didn't read the chat here on, on YouTube. So. Uh, Fiji said Uber's ending volume is among the highest of the day. Gonna look nice at open. Yeah, so Uber should have a uh, pretty good action. I mean, after hours, we had some good action as well. So uh, I'm looking for a little tiny uh, nice gap up and maybe potentially uh, more buying coming in and to push us and help us push over the daily 50 SMA. O'Brien. PayPal got hammered in the morning also with V. Yeah, so I saw I saw V as well. And MasterCard got hammered as well, MA and V, both. Since MA and V tend to move uh, simultaneously and kind of uh, together. Um, they're parallel names is what we would call it. Okay, so that's kind of it for PayPal. It's, it's stuck, stuck right back into the base that we made after the earnings reaction and the earnings gap down and push lower. Um, so we're right back into this base. Um, the support that you guys have to be watching out for is uh, 200, uh, 202-ish, 204, which we made today. And then the resistances that you guys have to be watching out for is 207 to 208, which is our most immediate resistance that we need to get out of in order to break above 210, which should bring us back uh, to the uptrend. Okay, so Chad, I hope you got that. And then let me tell you guys about Peton today. Um, so yesterday we had a huge, huge, 
uh, buying day from buyers as they kind of made a retaliation day as uh, Piton has been really really beaten up um, but I would say I'm still bullish into Piton tomorrow another great candidate for a day trade um, the reason why is that today I got in this count stake here okay this is a I'm looking at a two hour uh, time frame here but I was also looking at the 15 minute time frame but before I go into the 15 minute time frame um, I was looking at the two hour time frame here and I noticed that we're, we're coming right back down uh, to this previous area of resistance and it was highly likely that we can bounce and so at the very first time that we did below uh, this level of resistance I got in right uh, because it's good, good risk to reward here. I mean, it's good RR. Um, if he kept on uh, going lower and lower, and eventually uh, a lot lower than my um, my entry point, I had about a uh, 50 cent stop loss there. Um, I, I would get out, right? So a simple trade, uh, good RR, right? At the very least, I could have a higher. There's a higher probability that we can actually bounce up, and so that's exactly what we did. And right after I got in a few seconds, a huge amount of buying started to come in, and we bounced and bounced and bounced. And eventually we hit around 52.25 uh, which is when I got out all right um, so um, this was a pretty good trade here and tomorrow I'm still bullish on this name uh, because well hopefully it's in the time frame all right we're all, all we need to do tomorrow in order to uh, have a nice bounce again all right and the fact that we oops and the fact that we uh, came back down and, and closed a little bit below uh, this resistance around 51 and for the fact that we had a lot of volume at the end as well, a lot of bullish volume coming in, um, we should see a break of this uh, descending resistance here, right? this descending resistance trend line. So uh, the confirmation tomorrow will be a break above 51.50 to 55-ish, right? so 51.50.55-ish. All right, will be your breakout point for this name. Um, I'm gonna, be, I'm, I'm personally going to be watching out for this for another day trade. Um, I, I think the, the the reversal still has a lot more juice left, um, but you know, if you look at the daily time frame, you guys can say uh, that we had a lot of volume uh, yesterday, um, and I still think there's a lot more juice left for another big bounce up and potentially. Uh, retest the 10 SMA since the 10 SMA is almost caught up now thanks to yesterday's action um, and so we should be tested and potentially uh, close above it so my my long term uh, my long term short term pro profit targets will be 55 and 60 if I'm going to be um, you know uh, swing this name uh, depending on how we how we move tomorrow okay so Piton definitely a name worth looking out for for tomorrow. Chad, you said you have December calls for PayPal, right? Yeah, so PayPal. Yeah, so, you know, PayPal, it's something that, you know, if you have long term expirations, that's completely fine. I have next year's, so that's the reason why I added, and for the fact that it's still very cheap, and uh, for the fundamental analysis I've done on it. Um, and you guys, especially for my subscribers who are, are live with me right now who is, who's in this live stream you guys should also reread the fundamental analysis i've done uh, and the reason why i'm so bullish okay even with this downgrade okay so amazon so amazon amazon we're still building a very messy flag here but at the very least we're consolidating um, we're consolidating between 3525 ish to around 3000 uh i would say 3590 but I would say the key breakout point is 3,600. If you guys want a whole number level, and that's a, that's this is basically the level that everyone's watching, everyone and their mother. <laughs> um, 3.6k is the critical level that we need to break in order to start coming back to the previous all-time high numbers. Um, I'm very very bullish on Amazon long term. Uh, it should be above 4,000 soon, um, long term wise, not soon. Um, but I think. You know, I, I think it's 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 good to see that Amazon is consulting here for now, as we're allowing the 10 and the 21 to catch up. The 10 is already caught up; it's supporting the move higher. Um, all I want to see is a 21 uh, catching up, and maybe at the very least above 3,480 here. Okay, so I want the this 
21 SMA here, you guys can see this light blue line. Okay, I want it to uh, move up higher until it's up above 3,480. Okay, and the 10 SMA is already doing a great job at supporting the price higher as it's moving higher. Um, so we should be seeing great bounces tomorrow on Amazon if the market holds up. Okay, and you said Teton has share. Oh, oh they, they didn't. They did a uh, offering, huh? Offering of shares. Yeah, so it's normally bearish, which is probably the reason why, and that probably explains. Um, thank you for that, actually. I didn't know they had a share offering, uh, an offering of secondary shares there. Um, but yeah, so this this that probably explains why we had a gap down instead of a continuation today. Um, but yeah, that's what long term, uh, especially for long term investors on Python, that's bearish because that's going to dilute. Uh, their shares so that it's giving them less value on the shares that they, they've had ownership of for for you know maybe even before Python uh, was uh, public right so you know I, I think uh, it's it's short term bearish but long term I still think um, technically Python still has a lot more room to move long term um, to the upside because this is an overreaction by the market I, I mean I mean, Piton has established itself as a pretty good company. Their products are nice. I mean, I've I've seen it itself. I've tested itself. Uh, th these these uh, uh, these products that Peloton has made, and they're still continuously innovating new products. Um, I believe they have like a five hundred dollar product now, uh, which is a lot cheaper than their you know couple thousand bikes. So, um, obviously, Piton hasn't been doing well since uh, the economy has been rolling back, and the economy is back. Um, the economy has been acting as if, uh, you know, the whole pandemic is fully over, right? Uh, you know, Zoom, Peloton, um, all the in-home uh, stocks have been completely wrecked the last few months and last few weeks. And all the, you know, regular growth names um, that have been uh, always been benefiting from an open economy has been coming back, growing back as well. So just trust what the market is telling you, right? So uh, Peloton, obviously. Is, is, is not a good name to be looking out for, for uh, you know, next five to 10 years. But depending on how Peloton has been, uh, uh, you know, innovating themselves to, you know, come back on track, especially to appease the investors, um, I think I think Peloton is still worth it, uh, to be honest. And, and this right here, overall, is an overreaction of the market. Um, you know, I, you know they, they fell like, what, almost 40% on earnings. So, um, yeah, I, I still think Python overall is still a good choice. Uh, at the very least, a swing trade. Okay. Oh, Brian, you said you took Apple and Qcom puts. Huh. Interesting. Because I know Apple has been moving today with good volume. Um, yeah, I mean, tomorrow maybe you might be able to, at the very least, uh, take profits at the opening. For Apple and a QCOM? Hmm, why QCOM? Ah, that's right. They're very, very over overbought here. Um, they're making new all-time highs. Uh, I mean, yeah, tomorrow you can you can most likely take profits again on QCOM in the morning. And yeah, th this is completely feasible for for QCOM. That makes sense. I mean, I understood why you took QCOM puts. Yeah, it makes sense. There's a high chance that we can come back down to maybe even 177 ish. 177. Okay, so yeah, watch out for that. Good trade there, good trade. Amazon going to rip to the end of November as Black Friday plus holiday shopping comes up. Yeah, see, see that's the thing though, uh, Coop. There, uh, I'm, I'm expecting that as well, um, but due to the global shortage and all the economic bottlenecks that we've been seeing and the Fed, Federal Reserve has been also telling us as well uh, during the meetings, especially Jerome Powell. Um, I think I think holiday sh uh, shopping, the, the volume that we might be seeing is going to be a lot less compared to any of the previous years. Even if, it, you know, let's say, let's let's just take out uh, 2020, right? Um, when everything was online, everyone was shopping online, which is why we saw a lot of um, internet companies and e-commerce companies really seeing a lot of high volume, right? Um, and if you take that, that 2020 year out and just look at the previous years when, it, when everything was, you know, quote unquote normal, um, I think Amazon volume and any other internet company should be actually lower 
um, because you know we well we're, we're facing shortages like we've never seen before and we have a lot of demand right and so pe- now that people know that there are shortages and with the fact that there's some uh, there's soaring prices now because of the shortage I think people are gonna be less inclined to uh, have uh, any purchases online as well but hey you never know right um, you know, Amazon always has that hype, right? Uh, especially for Black Friday and all the holiday shopping. So, um, I, I'm pretty sure Amazon will have a, a nice price reaction at the very least before any actual numbers come out on how they did on Black Friday and any of the holidays. So, yeah, uh, Amazon could definitely go up higher though. Hey, Vivian, it's been a while. Uh, Amat. So, Amat has been a name um, that we've been looking at on the CFO Swing Watch and obviously we broke all time highs here after a, you know, a huge huge um, uh, level of resistance that we've been looking at 145 um, so Vivian this is this is going to keep it going up higher um, you know all the all the uh, well basically all uh, uh, semiconductor names have been going up higher so uh, this is a great name to be looking out for if you want to long anything um, you know, this is a name that I think you can't really short because first of all, technically, we broke out really strongly and um, I think, you know, it seems like we're able to at the very least continue the uptrend uh, but if you're able to flag here, since we're kind of uh, stopping now with this uh, big impulsive run up um, we should see continuous uptrend here but it seems like we did have earnings so Oh, we, we, we're almost having earnings actually, so let me actually check. Reporting tomorrow after market close. Okay, so tomorrow. Hmm. Yeah, I'm most likely gonna watch this name then. Um, there's probably gonna be a, a chance to potentially uh, day trade tomorrow because uh, you know, as you guys already know, uh, sometimes names tend to run up right before earnings, even if it's if it's after close. So uh, even if the uh, the ER is after uh, after the market closes, so. Um, yeah, a lot can be a good t- contender. Uh, if you look at the 15 minute time frame, yeah, so we might have, there might be a potential trade tomorrow uh, on the 15 minute time frame here if we're able to bounce um, around 156 or at the very least bounce um, at the 200 SMA here on the 15 minute time frame uh, because that's what tends to happen whenever. Uh, the price tends to come back down and hit the, uh, the 200 SMA on the 15 minute time frame. So that, that's around 155. Um, but a lot could definitely be a good day trade tomorrow if we have this uh, a lot of buying coming in before um, earnings after market close. Um, and if you do get in around 155, I think. A good profit target would be around 156 and 157, uh, especially if you see that that demand coming in and the buying coming in as well right before earnings. So this can be a potentially good trade. Good looks, there, good looks. Amazon is going in my house. So we ordered coffees and they got here last night while we slept. <laughs> so I, uh, yeah, so that, that just explains that Amazon has really been uh, pushing to make sure that they uh, deliver on time for for Prime members. Okay, so of course you're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you for uh, for coming in here and uh, giving me something to look at. As always, thank you to everyone. Okay, so um, I am going to be ending it here a little bit early. Um, we're hitting the thirty-minute mark, um, but. 
if you guys aren't in the CFS Rooney Watch, um, I highly, highly recommend it. I mean, if you guys were here on live um, on Monday, you guys, if, and if you guys were looking at the chat, I have some of my subscribers uh, explaining um, how valuable it is, because it is, I mean, <laughs> just for $10 per month. I mean, that's something that you guys can't really give up, right? I mean, that's, 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 uh, it is a great opportunity to get in. I mean, um, I'm having this flash sale until, uh, December 26th. So right after uh, Christmas, well, I will be changing the price right back to the original price of $25 per month. So um, I think $10 is a great price to get in. Um, I mean, I can 100% guarantee you guys that um, there's nothing like, like this out there uh, with the amount of uh, value that I give as well. I mean, I do the technical and fundamental analysis from top to bottom um, completely. and. Uh, the watch list has been on point every single week since I've started this. Um, so, if you guys don't want to get in at $10, it's, it's basically your loss. I mean, you know, it's it's it's, it's a really good, um, I, I mean, from what I've, I, what I've read, I mean, I'm just taking the words out of all my subscribers' mouth here. It's been a really, really good tool for them to use. So, um, go ahead and check it out. Uh, check the link in my bio. Um, and uh, it's your choice there. All that's left is for your actions. <laughs> this membership is like buying Bitcoin at 5k. <laughs> that's a good analogy. I hope, I mean, I wish I bought Bitcoin at 1k. <laughs> You're locked in for life. Hey, thank you, man. Thank you, thank you. But yes, um, just to remind you guys again, um, the... CFS Ringer Watch is only for $10 per month until 12 26, December 26, okay, uh, right after Christmas. All right, it's a pretty good uh, day to remember. So <laughs> if you guys want to get in be right before it ends, you guys can as well right after Christmas. Um, but it's only $10 per month. All right, so um, it seems like that's it for today. Um, Oh, and also, if you guys haven't seen my Instagram story yet, um, go ahead and look at the Instagram story because I am restarting my four weeks program this weekend. All right, we start 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time uh, or 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And uh, this is my first time actually offering a sale of the original price and a discount, a 10% discount. Um, and discount code is 10 off and uh, uh, the word off is not capitalized all right so um, you know this is a great opportunity for you guys if you guys have and have been looking to actually learn so um, I, I go through and it's an it, you know I go through everything from the basics to the advanced topics uh, top to bottom um, and it, you know, if you guys want to see the reviews I posted a review uh, on my uh, on, on my Instagram story as well so make sure you guys watch that um, but overall, I think, um, you know, if you guys really want to learn um, step by step, this program is really, really good. It's a great opportunity as well, since I've, I've been, uh, you know, really pushing um, that you guys have to uh, learn the steps from the basics to the, you know, if you guys don't know the basics, right, um, it's, it's, it's not really prudent for you guys to move on to advanced topics. And that's exactly what I do in the Forex program. I make sure that you guys get the fundamentals and the basics down, and then we move forward um, to the advanced topics, right? Um, and if you guys are ever curious on, uh, on whether or not you guys want to speak to an actual past student of mine, I can arrange that for you guys as well too. Um, I, I, I haven't had any negative reviews on the Forex program at all. Um, uh, since you know I, I've taught 65 students in the past and none of them has said anything about anything negative as well <laughs> to me or or in the reviews so you guys can go you guys you guys can DM me and I'll be happy to and I'll be really glad to actually set you guys up with any of my past students so um, you guys can ask for that as well I'm completely fine with that okay so that's it for tonight i'll see you guys next week at the same time same place youtube or instagram uh, make sure you guys are subscribed to my youtube as well um, i'm going to be putting out a lot more content as well soon um and uh yeah i i'll see you guys next week 7 30 pacific standard time uh, or 10 p.m uh eastern standard time all right 
So I thank you all for coming in as always. Um, I really, really appreciate each and every one of you guys uh, joining my streams here. Um, I really wouldn't be able to do any of this without you guys, uh, especially these live streams. Okay, I'll be logging off on YouTube and Instagram. Have a great rest of your night, guys. Oh, uh, Joel, you're good, you're good. <laughs> you, you can just uh, uh, look at the, um, uh, at the playback here for the live stream on YouTube or my Instagram. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's all right. <laughs> you don't have to be uh, fumbling here. All right, have a great rest of your night, guys. Have a good night, have a good night.